Another type of knot uh, that uh, you might frequently want to use would be the slip knot. And the slip knot is used uh, uh, when you want to have a loop uh, at the end of a rope that's not fixed like the bowline is, but rather that will cinch up or close up around something uh, that you've uh, tied it to. Slip knot is extremely simple. What you want to do is you want to take the tail in one hand, you want to take the standing part in the other, and you double it over to make kind of a little loop like this. Right. And once you've done that, then you bring the standing part through the loop that you just made. And when you do, now you've got this bigger loop. All right, so we have the small loop that we started out with. We've got the tail and we've got the standing part. And now in order for this to really be a slip knot, we want to look at this and we want to see if I pull on the standing part, how it makes that loop get smaller. And if I pull on the loop, it's pulling the standing part up through there. All right, so the advantage of that is that if I put it around something, it'll get a nice grip on it like that. So that's a good way to do that. Uh, the slip knot's also used in tying a more complex knot that we're going to learn how to tie after a while, which is called a trucker's hitch. All right, so this is the slip knot. Uh, one way you can determine whether or not you've tied this properly, uh, and uh, there's a, a way to do it that wrong that's going to come loose. If I pull on that and I've gotten rid of my slip knot that I have, when, whenever you tie the slip knot, you want to make sure that you start at the very end of the tail in making your loop. Because if you don't, this can happen. If you start too far in and you make your loop, you can accidentally pull the standing part, I mean the tail through. And when you do that, when you pull the tail through there, you'll notice that pulling on the standing part here, the long part of the rope, doesn't really have much effect on it. But if I pull on the tail, that's going to make the knot get smaller. But the problem then is if I put this loop around something and then I pull on it, the tail will just pull right through the uh, end of the knot. So we don't want to have that happen. So remember, what you want to do is to start at the very end of the rope and we'll make uh, a loop of this sort. And then we're going to pull another loop through. And our bigger loop then is the one that we actually want to have when we get finished. And notice in doing it that way so that I was grabbing the very end of the tail and making the loop, uh, my first loop at the very end of the rope, then it's not possible to pull the wrong part through. So you can use the standing part, not the tail. And notice again that when I pull on the standing part, I can adjust the size of that loop and that the loop can be put around something and tightened on it that way so that we have a nice tight loop. 